you are a survivor. Uh, brain aneurysm, yeah. 08. Recently overcome COVID-19. Typically, I don't start my interviews this way, but let's go there first. Yes, it's a good day. But for you, that takes on a whole different meaning. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and it kind of relates to my business. You know, as a young man, as, as in, in sports, all these young men, you know, they have this uh, Tarzan, you know, I'm, I'm unbreakable, I know what I'm doing kind of attitude. And myself included, I, you know, when I it was discovered that I had an aneurysm. You know, I, I remember leaving the, uh, I, I had gone through some testing and whatnot. And I was very fortunate because my aneurysm didn't pop. You know, we caught it. And um, so when I never, I never forget when I left the last doctor's office, I had went downstairs and I sat in the hospital cafeteria and I kind of felt sorry for myself. Like, I was like, man, how could this happen to me? You know, like, and I was questioning it. And then I finally said to myself, I said, look, about an hour in, I sat there, I had some lunch and coffee. I said, if life were to end tomorrow, I could never, ever complain that I didn't do some of the most incredible things on this planet. And what I mean by that is, obviously, growing up in New York, being from uh, two immigrant parents, going to a major university like Maryland on a football scholarship, and then getting into a business that allowed me to be in front of the biggest names in sports entertainment. Um, you know, I got to see, uh, I got to be a part of a Super Bowl, and this is 2008 because 2007, the Giants won. And I did all these incredible things. So I said, I can't be mad or upset or sad because look at all that I look at all the things that I've done and um, I went through the surgery and you know it was a it was not a simple recovery but it was a two-year period where it took me to really get back to normal where I could walk side by side with you and uh, and not lag behind or just be exhausted because uh, you know at one point I was laughing because I had, I have a big scar here. You can't really see it, but, uh, cause they did a great job. You know, I had 80 staples in my head. Wow. Right? Wow. And, uh, and that was, I, and I felt like I was, uh, one of the basketball players wearing a, a hat in June, you know, a ski cap. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it just, I, I stuck out, you know, this is September. So the weather's still warm and whatnot. And, and then afterwards, I was just like, you know what, just take it off. And I took it off. And uh, it wasn't that I was proud that I was alive. It was more that I was proud that I went through this thing. And then I survived it. You know, like uh, the one thing that the only one thing that really had me bummed out was when I was in the hospital, they, you know, you sign all these waiver forms and everything. And the, and the doctor or the nurse said to me, you know, there is a possibility that you're going to be here for, you know, a couple of weeks. And I was like, man, I can't be here for a couple of weeks. So I walked out of the hospital in seven days. Oh, wow. To God yeah. be the glory, man. Thank God. Yeah. So, uh, and how that happened was uh, I'm one of those guys that needs air conditioning because it was hot out and whatnot. And I got up and I'm like, man, is somebody turn off the air or what? So I'm walking down the hallway with two roller IVs trying to find somebody to turn on the air conditioning. And the nurse is like, oh, my God, what are you doing out of bed? You know, blah, blah, blah. and I have a catheter, no less. So uh, the doctor said, we're just going to give you a, an exam right now, physical. I did the physical and he goes, listen, you're a bull. You can go home. He goes, Beautiful. We, we fixed you know, the problem. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean go run 10 miles or go out and party, but go home, go be at home. You don't need to be here. And that was kind of that whole situation. And, uh, and then it led to so many, you know, uh, it was one of those things where 
when you say that I know a lot of people, yes, I do. And when I was in the ICU unit, it was kind of funny. You know, I had some uh, certain friends that came to visit. And one of them said, uh, and, you know, one of them told somebody else and so on. And then my phone started to blow up in the hospital. So the nurse turned off my phone because it was just, it would had to go through their front, you know, I had to go through their main line. And then you connected it to my phone. It wasn't like I gave you a direct number. So uh, they were getting tired of playing house operator. <laughs> and I'll never forget my, uh, I was, my neighbor said, do you understand that if everyone knew that he was in here, you'd probably have to have a security guard at the gate, at the, at the elevator, because everyone would be trying to come in here to see him. And I, even though I was like, my face was out to here and I was all stitched up and everything, I kind of laughed out of my one side of my cheek because I, I kind of had the idea and I, I didn't want everybody to know. Uh, but word got out and whatnot. But, you know, hey, look, I knock on wood. I get out of bed every morning and uh, and I pray to God every day at night that, you know, hey, thank you for letting me be here. And uh, the big joke is, like you mentioned before, hey, I survived coronavirus. I survived uh, a brain aneurysm. And here's the funny one. And I survived divorce. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.